uh, Fishing Community Development or Fishing Community New Deal by Park Sang Woo, Director General from Korea Maritime Institute. Very nice to meet you. I research government policies, so I don't know if I'm very good, if I'm suitable for a marine humanities session as a government uh, policy researcher. But among the theme is how to innovate the fishing villages, and, and the government is trying to do so through a new deal. So I'm going to talk about the new deal and the examples on the field on how to develop the fishing villages, fishing communities with the new deal. Since we are uh, a little bit behind time, I'm going to be uh, very compact in this. Fishing villages uh, come to being naturally mostly, to, uh, mostly for industrial purposes. So the kind of location for fishing villages is sometimes very uh, challenging. Since the 1970s, civil engineering develops. And there was a situation, there was a, a, an environment where uh, people can actually make uh, fishing villages instead of a natural, uh, be natural becoming of fishing villages of the past. And these uh, fishing villages development are closely related to the development of the uh, industry as well. So if the industry goes well, then the fishing villages become bigger. And these days, due to the changes to the environment and the climate and the industry, and this industry be slowly becomes a red ocean and goes down a decline and along with the fishing villages as well. The uh, places that I'm going to take as examples are the fishing villages that become bigger. However, they face challenges such as aging population and aging of facilities. As Professor Kim Yoon Mi mentioned during her presentation, fishing villages is a place to live in. And at the same time, it is a place to make money for fishermen. It is a place of work. It is a place for living. This place for living and place for place for work is composed of the fishing ground where they make money and they make they catch uh, fish and the fish port where they actually draw their catch to the land and the hinterland the, vi the villages that are behind the uh, the ocean as you can see that the houses are gathered in the hinterland that is only natural because the biggest asset for the fishermen are the fish boats and in in order to keep the fish boat safely, they need a port, a fish port. And it is only natural for their houses to be located closer and closer together to the port where their biggest asset for making money are, which are the fish boats. So fish villages are a place to live and place for work for fishing uh, fishermen, but it is also a fish for recreation for the general public. The general public will come visit for their comfort and relaxation. And as the people's style of relaxation uh, changes, uh, many families will come to the beaches for relaxation. And recently, there are other experiences that people can enjoy in the waters. And their place of recreation sometimes conflicts with the places of uh, the fishermen. Sometimes the uh, sometimes the divers and the tourists illegally uh, go into the waters, or they infringe on the uh, spaces of the fishermen. Fish village have the public value which cannot be replaced by anything else. The biggest public uh, value and the role is that the fish villages defend our uh, maritime territory. And they, in, in Sinan of Jeollanamdo, there was a talk show on 
the uh, Fishing oh, Village yeah, Development. So I visited there, attended the talk show, and many people ask, ask why should we give more consideration or more support to the fishing villages when there are a lot of other rural villages such as agricultural villages. I say that is because fishing villages have a very unique role in public good and that is why we need to make sure that they don't go into extinction. When you come into a fishing village and look at the pattern of the economic activity over one day and over a year, you see that their, their lifestyle is completely different from a farmer, for instance. The fishermen uh, do their job in the early, early in the morning or very late at night, and they have to sell their catch or give their catch for uh, sale very early in the morning which is very different from the hours of the day of a, a regular farmer. So if you look at the facilities and the roles of uh, these facilities in and around the fishing village, you will see that they are very unique. The problem is that these fishing villages, which are so important and play important roles, are at the risk of extinction. I'm going to Every year, 6,300 uh, fishing families disappear, due, and about 1,000, only 1,000 families are added to this family community. You can see that 6,300 disappear and 1,000 uh, are added every year, which means that the fishing villages are on the road to distinction. You look at the islands, uh, which are at the outskirts of the territory, and the fishing villages are disappearing slowly. So the satisfaction with the quality of life in islands and fishing villages are much lower than other types of uh, places to live. The place of uh, people at the fishing village, which is as a place of place to live and place to work in, and as a place for relaxation for other people, for, uh, it is hard to for fishing villages to maintain all these roles because they are uh, disappearing. We are looking at the uh, democratic uh, democratic statistics, and every time we do the survey the speed of extinction is getting faster and faster every time we check, which is a very serious problem. As uh, Professor Kim Yumi men mentioned, so in the past, fishing villages' main role was to make money by catching the fish or catching other fishery resources, but now the main economic uh, activities are evolving or changing to recreation. In a positive note, it means that their industry is revolving, but on a negative note, it means that uh, fishing alone is not enough to sustain their living. Another, uh, one, one other thing that we need to remember is that the fish villages are the places that many, uh, many Korean people flock to for relaxation. And let's we took a look we, we took a look at how many people actually visit uh, villages and the ports. Several tens of thousand people to up to four million people, and on average, more than six hundred thousand tourists visit the fishing villages to buy fisheries and assemble those fisheries or enjoy the recreational activities. So the, the villages that used to make money uh, out of catching fisheries are evolving into a place of relaxation for visitors, which shows a potential to create new kind of jobs and new kind of work. This uh, should be something that we need to take, uh, pay attention to. Now coming back to this fishing village new deal, why did the government come up with this idea of the New Deal. You see that the fishing villages, there are many fishing villages that are quite big, but most of the fishing villages are very small. These small villages 
are uh, often have been often isolated or excluded from government policies because they and as a result they lack uh, necessary facilities and lack the efforts to create more jobs and values. Therefore, the government decided to create some changes, generate some changes to these small and outdated fishing villages by putting some investment into it. And actually, they are seeing some results out of these efforts. Since this is an SOC project, the most prominent result would be uh, providing the better access to islands and islanders. And thanks to the improvement of these uh, facilities, they were able to reinforce the safety of the facilities and convenience as well. And they are creating more facilities for recreation. Let's look at uh, these facilities in more detail. This is an SOC project, but rather a small SOC project. The government is spending 3 trillion won into, into this project and from next year they are going to evolve this from an SOC to a more uh, sophisticated project aimed at improving the quality of li life. The essence is that this is a regional community, such as the fishing community fraternity and the administrative officers. They will discuss what they need to improve and make the decisions and implement the plans. Does it sound very difficult? So far, the fishing communities would only follow whatever the government tells them to do and they did not have any uh, process of discussion among the people in the village. There are some villages that are actually showing some results, very good results out of this new approach. You can see what is actually happening in these villages. Many residents are uh, taking part into this process. I will uh, introduce three cases. And the title of my story is Islanders are people of Republic of Korea as well. It is Banje uh, village. This is where uh, three meals a day were shot. They had only one dream, they had only one wish. It is for the ferry to birth directly onto our island so that we can uh, so that we can board and board the board the ferry more safely. So they thought, thought about how to make it happen, how to allow the ferry to birth directly on the island. So they put most of the budget they were given to into this project and by building the facility they were able to save time and cost. It was a big improvement in the access to the island for islanders and visitors. And the second is one community which realize a self-reliant self livelihood and economic welfare. This is called Chungwang uh, Village. And this is a tight land that is half Sosan and half uh, a different village. This is where Kamte uh, or sweet labor is produced and in this fish village they build a build a plant for processing sweet labor and they sell it to uh, supermarkets so far the communities was an economic communities and now they are evolving into a more inclusive community the community fraternity is providing pension to, uh, to the village people who are older than 75 years so that they can stay self-reliant. So actually our researchers went there and took a film. I'll show you the film that is uh, 30 seconds long.
this is what the village looks like. It's a village that's known for free labor. The villagers there catch the street labor and they actually, some of them actually work for the factories of processing the labor and they invest into the cooperative funds and they make some dividends out of the investment. As I mentioned, the kind of economic benefits they uh, obtain out of it are circulated back to the community. As I said, the elderly villagers who are older than 75 years are, are not allowed to actually do the fishing anymore and they are given the, given the pension. And the last example, as Professor Kim Yumi mentioned, it is a fishing village, but this fishing village also sells coffee. This is Odal village in Donghae city in Gangwon-do. It is a place where people come to consume fishery catches. In the past, they uh, benefited from another government project, it was and, but this was not being utilized, so they retrofitted to into a cafe and the members uh, invest about 100,000 uh, won each person and the revenue out of this cafe is 15 million won every month. So let me give you my conclusion. As I said, the fishing communities are quickly transitioning from a production center to a tourism service center. The fishing villages that were accustomed to producing uh, fisheries should be able to respond to this uh, fast changes in order to be sustainable. Still, there are so many communities that are left at the brink of extinction, which means that the government should make more investment into these villages and they should not give up on these villages. In this process, uh, we are seeing a lot of benefits out of this investment and building on these benefits, we should continue to pay attention to these villages. Thank you.